Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We go behind the scenes to see how spam is made in the factory, as well as an insight into the special techniques used in the canned meat factory. Have you ever wondered how canned meat is made? Processed meat is one of the fastest selling items in the food industry. They're reliable, they have a conveniently long shelf life, and most people don't know this, but they are prepared under extremely sanitary conditions. They also exist in different variants of meat, and a popular favorite is canned pork meat. Spam, made by Hormel Foods Corporation, is the original and best-selling canned pork. And in this video, we'll take a look at how it's made. Spam was first released into the American market in 1937 by J. Hormel, who had big plans for his father's company. And today, the company's success can be attributed to his great entrepreneurial skills. Spam is consumed across America at a rate of 3.8 cans per second, with Hawaii being the largest consumer of the product. To meet up with the crazy demand across the country, Ormel Foods Corporation has two huge production plants within the country, and they produce 44,000 cans of Spam every hour. The first and most important ingredient used in producing Spam is meat from pork. In previous years, the pigs used for spam production were reared at the Hormel factory. However, because of factors like the high cost of maintenance, increased labor, and a few others, the company now patronizes pork dealers and freshly cut meat is transported to the plant. 90% of the meat is extracted from the shoulder of the pigs, while the other 10% from the pigs' thighs and buttocks, also known as ham. This choice of meat parts in the ratio is one of the things that sets Spam aside from other canned pork meat product. The meat at the shoulder of the pig is significantly harder to separate from the bone. Therefore, most of the company's competitors go for meat extracted from other parts of the pig's body. Definitely this change affects the taste and quality of the Spam. Hence, why Hormel's Spam is different from others and the best one out there. When the meat arrives at the plant, it's washed in a huge machine, and the ham is separated from the pork shoulders. Next, the shoulders are transported into a powerful hydraulic press machine which separates the meat off the bone. The meat is squeezed off with high pressure and precision, and the deboned meat is placed in a large basket. On the other hand, the ham has to be manually deboned by the factory workers and sorted into one of two labeled baskets. The whitest ham with the most fat is separated from the redder ones with more meat. Next, the sorted meat is transported from the cold room to a different floor, where the rest of the production process occurs. A large crane carries the basket of meat and pours their content into a large metal trough built with a drill. The machine grinds the meat and transports them to another machine where they are weighed into batches. Each batch weighs about 3.6 kilograms and is passed through a metal detector to remove any knives or metallic objects that may have fallen into the mix from any of the machines. After the grinding process, a sample of the ground meat is collected and taken to the inspection area. There, the inspectors check to see if the shoulder pork and white and red hams are mixed in the right proportion. After approving each batch, they are transported into the vacuum mixer, where the other ingredients are added. These ingredients include salt, sugar, water, and sodium nitrite. And once they're added, the lid of the mixer is placed, and all of these are stirred together. The mixer contains refrigerated ammonia, which brings the temperature of the meat down below zero degrees Celsius, which allows the flavor of the seasonings to penetrate the meat. While the batches of meat are being mixed, the typical brick-shaped cans are also being prepared. They are taken off the storage pallets one by one, flipped upside down, and directed to the filling machine via a conveyor system. While the cans are en route, they are flushed with water at high pressure, and because of their orientation, the water drains out immediately. The now clean cans make their way to the filling machine. At the mixing station, the meat is manually removed from the mixers and fed into receivers. This part can be quite strenuous because it involves lifting out several hundred kilograms of meat from tall mixers at a relatively fast pace. From the receivers, the meat is passed through pipes which lead to the cone-shaped nozzles of the filling machine. Specific portions of the meat are squeezed into each of the cans lying directly underneath the nozzle. After being filled with meat, 
The cans pass on to a closing machine, which seals each can with a tightly fitted lid. Next, the sealed cans are conveyed to a machine that stamps each one with an identifying code. This allows the product to be traced back to the manufacturer. Next, the sealed cans are transported toward an industrial hydrostatic cooker, which contains six layers of shelves on each layer. The cans approach the cooker in a straight line, and a mechanical arm pushes 24 cans to one shelf per time. When each shelf has been filled, it moves up, making room for another empty one to be filled, and this process goes on and on. These filled shelves are arranged inside the cooker, which has 11 chambers and is filled with hot water. The shelves travel up and down within their respective chambers, and the heat from the water steams the meat inside the cans. After cooking for hours, the shelves are removed from the hydrostatic cooker. The cans are then removed from the shelves using a mechanical hand and allowed to cool down before labeling can take place. From the cooker, they are arranged on a conveyor system which transports the cans to an automatic labeler. The labeling machine attaches a polypropylene film label to each can and then cuts the label to the correct length. Once wrapped, the cans are now ready for packaging. 24 cans are neatly arranged on a branded flat cardboard paper, which is folded into a box and taken to the storage area. Each box is stamped with the production date and other numbers used for identification. In the storage room, the boxes are stacked on one another and remain here for a week or two, awaiting approval to be shipped. The cans are thoroughly inspected, and one in every 1,000 cans is opened and tested based on smell, taste, texture, and other qualities. They are also checked to see if the cans are sealed properly. This inspection process takes roughly 10 days, and if there are no problems, the cans are sent out and supplied to buyers within and outside the country. One of the best things about Spam is its indefinite shelf life, and this is possible because the meat is sealed within an airtight tin. Because of this, an unopened can does not have to be refrigerated, and the product can be transported worldwide, not minding the long delivery time. Spam is popularly eaten in places of the world where fresh meat is hard to find or too expensive. It can be sliced and used to make sushi, as a patty for burgers, or even straight out of the can. How do you like to eat your Spam? I know a few different Hawaiian recipes, and they know how to cook Spam. Leave your answer in the comments section below.